Before you on the hill stands a gazebo. It has not re reacted yet. You roll for initiative. Welcome to Birth of a World. Good evening, Twitch. Hello, YouTube. On uh, today's Birth of a World, we are going to be making a monster. In particular, we're going to be taking a piece of art that uh, my friend C Hillier 17 uh, created and creating a stat block for it. So let's uh, get the unveiling going here. This guy. This is called the Eyeball Tree, uh, as, as indicated by that sign there. Um, we're going to be making a stat block for the Eyeball Tree. Um, you can find this artwork on chillier17.deviantart.com. Go hit, give his uh, gallery a glimpse. Uh, <coughs> basically, <coughs> sorry, my lungs are still trying to escape. Um, uh, a couple weeks ago we did one of these, and it's become the most popular video of mine on YouTube now, so I've decided I'm going to make this a regular occurrence. So probably about once a month, maybe once every two months, uh, I'm going to go onto one of my friend's DeviantArt pages, uh, they've agreed to this, uh, grab a piece of artwork, and build a Pathfinder or a fifth ed stat block for it. Now you might be wondering, well the DMG isn't out yet for fifth ed, so we're going to be doing Pathfinder instead. So um, just like the previous time I did one of these, I'm going to be making a Pathfinder stat block. But it should convert fairly easily to 5th ed if you're looking for monsters for your 5th ed campaign. Um, just a word of note on this, though. Whereas all the stuff I make is Creative Commons and you can use it freely, don't go ripping off my friend's artwork, please. Um, I don't think he's said it could be, it could be used uh, in other published works, whereas my stuff, I don't really care what you do with it. It's Creative Commons. Um, so with that little technicality out of the way, let's get started. So let, let's look at this thing and kind of take an impression. I'm, I'm waving my hands here, but uh, let's look at this guy uh, and take kind of an impression of what this thing is. Um, so it's a tree in the swamp with lots of eyeballs, and that's kind of unsettling, and it warns you not to feed it. <coughs> I'm thinking a good spot to start for this creature might be uh, coming up with a, choosing what type it should be. Um, I can think of two types that uh, would be suited for this kind of monster. One is a plant. Uh, I've got the stats here for uh, plants in Pathfinder. So you can see they've got a D8 hit die. Uh, not excellent, but good, a medium, I guess they call it, progression uh, of attack bonus. So it's uh, uh, physical damage dealing. It's got a good fortitude save, uh, which means it's, it's going to be resistant to uh, primarily necromancy, um, but also cold, generally speaking. Those are the two types of spells that cause fort saves. Also resistant to curses and diseases and things like that. Um, it's got uh, very, very low skills, um, which is not really surprising given that it is a plant. Uh, it's not going to be learning to play the violin, probably. Um, and it's got uh, these traits. So it's low light vision. Because they're plants, they don't have brains. Um, they're immune to mind, anything that affects mind. And because they don't have metabolism to s like a normal person or like a living thing would, like a, like a, like a uh, animal, there we go, would, uh, they're immune to most of the effects that would affect animals. Can't use weapons, can't use armor. And they do breathe, and some of them do eat. In fact, quite a few of them in D&D uh, &D and Pathfinder eat flesh. Um, but uh, obviously it is a plant and doesn't sleep. So that's kind of one set of traits we could start off with, with this, for this guy. The other type uh, is the aberration type. So aberrant creatures uh, have bizarre, strange anatomy. Think like Cthulhu or any of the kind of Lovecraftian mythos horrors. Uh, uh, if you've ever played like um, uh, Arkham Horror or any of that sort of thing, you've got the, these demonic forces that are all eyeballs and mouths and appendages at strange angles and look really wrong, look kind of hard to process. Um, that's, those are aberrations in Pathfinder uh, and in most editions of D&D. So what have they got? Well, they've got a D8 for a hit die. The same... Uh, attack progression as the plants do. Their good save is will though. So instead of being a good fortitude save and resistant to necromancy and cold and all that, these have a good will save which means they're resistant to uh, things like mind control, 
uh, uh, or illusions, that, these sort of things, which kind of reflects the thing, you know, this thing has a mind now. They're not mindless like the trees are. It has a brain. It has eyes. Um, but it's got a strong brain or an alien brain that's difficult to influence, right? It's kind of the flavor for having a good will save. Um, they've got more skills because, again, they have a brain. Um, you, can almost, you can almost split monsters into groups that have eyes and a brain and those that don't. And things that have eyes and a brain are usually subject to illusions and uh, manipulation via spellcasters like enchantment, things like that. And things that don't have eyes or a brain, uh, either or, and they're missing either of these two things, um, are generally much harder to influence directly. So the plant, with its immunity to all mind-affecting uh, effects, basically is like the goodwill save on roids. It's, it's, in this case, it has no mind to affect. In this case, it has a strong mind that is difficult to affect. Uh, instead of low-light vision, aberrations have dark vision out to 60 feet, which is really good, makes them very good in, uh, dark invi in complete darkness, in dark environments. Um, they're generally proficient with weapons and armor uh, if they come with them. So because an aberration is a large, aberration is a large, rather diverse group of creatures, uh, some of them can wield weapons and wear armor, uh, and so the game uh, makes them proficient with it for the sake of having a creature use a weapon it's not proficient with is dumb. Um, and they both breathe, they all breathe, eat, and sleep, so you can in fact put them to sleep. Um, still batting back and forth between these two suggestions here. Would anyone in chat like to uh, put forth a suggestion as our starting point? Uh, what type should the eyeball tree be? Uh, if anyone in chat wants to go on that. I'm going to let you guys come up with suggestions. Um, and while I wait for the chat lag to catch up, let's talk about challenge rating. This thing looks pretty big and it looks pretty vicious. I kind of want to give it a fistful, of hit, a fistful of hit dice, and actually have it make it be actually a, kind of a big, tough monster. Um, so I think, plus aberrations in general tend towards the higher challenge rating, just because they can. There are things that come from outside of the planes, and uh, they're really they tend to be things that are just wrong and hard to deal with. So I'm gonna say that for challenge rating, I'm gonna put it at about a ten. So we've got a CR10 aberration. Uh, I'm seeing in the chat here, basically, everyone who's in the chat is saying aberration. So uh, we're going to go with an aberration. So um, uh, let's, uh, well, let's get these this bits of data in here. So it's going to have a D8 hit die, and it's going to have a base attack bonus. of. So we should figure out how many hit dice it has, actually. Um, so for quick reference, let's try and find an aberration that's about uh, CR10, and we can quickly double check how much hit dice it should have. Uh, I'm going to go about this the long way, because this is a teaching podcast. Um, so we're going to go about showing it precisely how to uh, dig up uh, information, like how many hit dice it should have. So this one's got 15 uh, hit dice on so CR9. Let's get a few other examples out here. Uh, grab this guy and this guy. Uh, evil eye, that is the, the knockoff uh, beholder. Uh, CR12, and it's got 11d8. Seems like there's quite a bit of variety actually in how much hit points this thing's going to have. Uh, I feel like it should tend towards the high end maybe, just because um, it's CR10 and it's made of wood or wood like material. So it's probably going to be very tough. It's probably going to have uh, high armor and high uh, hit points, not unlike this Draconid here with 13 natural armor and uh, 15 hit dice. Uh, the number of hit dice is crucial because it uh, determines a number of other stats, like how physical it is. Uh, so I think I'm going to go, let's go with around, we can always change adjust this afterwards, but I'm going to say a nice even 16 D8 for hit dice. So now we have hit dice figured out. So I feel like this is going to be a physical monster more than a, a spell casting kind of monster, right? Uh, we can maybe give it a few, we'll give it some abilities that are eye focused once we get down to what its special abilities are, and maybe we'll have to adjust its HP down if it's uh, too much of a heavy hitter. So I'm going to close this tab on plants because we're not doing that. So 16 hit dice, which means conveniently we have a uh, base attack bonus of plus 12. 
Um, and a goodwill save. What does a goodwill save mean? Uh, I should explain that one. So let's see if I can, if we can get that quickly. Um, find you the text we're looking for. Um, saving through. Da, da, da. I'm trying to see. I know. I know that there. I could just write it down, but I want to find the explanation so I can read it back to you. Ah, la 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 la. Um. Do 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 do. Okay. So this is something that I think Paizo could probably improve. Uh. So let me pull up an example in from the classes. Uh, so what? Does a good saving throw versus a medium saving throw mean? Let's look at the fighter. They keep. Uh, so um, here we see a good save versus two bad saves. So uh, basically, we just go by hit dice again here. So it's going to be uh, ten would be a good save and five would be a bad save. Um, so let us start making notes here on, uh, we said we were going to have a good will save, so that's going to be plus 10 base, plus 5, and then these will be modified by its stats still, so we're not going to finalize them just yet. Uh, alignment. <clears throat> I feel like aberrations tend to be creatures of chaos more than anything, so I'm probably going to chaotic neutral, I think. If anyone has a compelling case for giving it a different alignment, feel free to voice up. It's a tree, large or huge. Kind of depends on the perspective of this guy, I think. Um, I think it should be huge. So he, making it huge versus large, um, huge creature is going to be, have slightly lower armor class um, because it's easier to hit, um, but it helps us justify kind of having its... Uh, yeah, having it have higher, um, so it'll have higher uh, combat maneuver capability um, in exchange for, uh, you know what, let's look at the table because it's more fun if uh, I can actually show you the stats. I feel like this is a teaching podcast. So here's the size modifiers. We can see large is a minus one, huge is a minus two. It's a difference in one point, but it can be significant. So I'm trying to see where... Whatever, I know size modifier applies to armor class, uh, and it applies to attack bonuses, yeah. and so on. Um, so we were gonna, so let's make it huge, I think. Uh, so make a note that it's minus two. Actually, let's not do that. Let's just put that where it needs to be. Minus two size. Do, 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 do. Yeah, no, it doesn't affect your size. What am I talking? Ba 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 ba. Da 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 da. I think it applies to a few other things, but we'll worry about that. Uh, da. Yeah, there we go. Combat maneuver bonus. That's what I'm thinking of. Special size modifier. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. Huge creatures get a bonus to combat maneuvers. Uh, and to comment maneuver defense. So let's just make a note about that one. Um, comment maneuvers for anyone who's playing fifth edition here are um, Pathfinder's basically answer to how broken things like grappling were in 3.5. Because um, Pathfinder was kind of, it diverged from mainline D&D around 3.5. This is things like, comment maneuvers are things like tripping and grappling and pushing people around, stuff like that. Um, that's what these two stats, the comment maneuver bonus and comment maneuver defense uh, are used for. What else we need here? Um, 4 plus int mod, we'll figure out what its int mod is. Um, dark vision, let's note that in the senses area here. Dark vision is 60 feet, and then this isn't going to have this, well, it's not drawn wearing any weapons and armor, and I don't think uh, it's going to be wielding any weapons and armor. I think its weapons uh, I kind of see this being an animate plant, kind of, you know, Whomping Willow kind of thing, you know, where, where it has these big, 
It's got these big kind of claw-like uh, branches that I think it could probably grab someone with. Um, maybe it like paralyzes them with his with its gaze, uh, like the Reeds from Zelda, and then it will come and grab you and then um, suck the life out of you or uh, something like that. I think we'll we'll probably go with some with that kind of detail. So it's going to have a physical. It's going to have a a melee attack. It's probably not going to have a range attack, um, except for some spells. So I'm going to actually take ranged off of here. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, let's go to uh, its. Um, let's talk about its attacks, actually, since we're talking about how it fights here. Let's. Uh, someone in chat is suggesting that Roots could grapple as a surprise. That's not a terrible idea. Let's make a note of that. Keep that in the maybe pile. Uh, for now. Um, so let's give this guy... So I think he's going to probably have a grab um, uh, to help facilitate that whole idea of it stuns you and then it can and then it picks you up. Um, I'll explain what grab is in a second. But let's get up the stats for a slam attack. Universal monster rules. Uh, look at how easy it is to make stat blocks without when you have everything that's easily Google searchable. There we are. Natural attacks by size. So here's kind of all the kinds of natural attacks uh, that things can have uh, depending on their anatomy. Um, bite, claw, gore, pincers, tail slap, slam, sting, etc. Slam is usually just kind of the blunt attack, hit it with the part of your body. I think that is best uh, representative. <coughs> I think that is best representative of our uh, tree fellow here. So he's going to be huge. So his slam attack is 1d8 so far. So he's going to need to be quite strong um, for this to go. So we're going to give it a very high stre uh, strength stat, quite likely. Plus uh, grab. Plus grab, and uh, we talked about, uh, we were saying that maybe it has a life leech. Um, but maybe it has to have you grabbed first before. Let's say, let's say it has to be holding you for a round before we can do that and we'll so what is grab uh, let's pull up the textbook description there we go so grab um, in short is basically if it hits you it can start grappling you uh, for free without giving you a chance to fight back um, you still this grapple can still fail uh, but um, yeah, it can use it can simply grab you with its appendage. So this is a thing like uh, other animate plants, for instance, can like hit you with a vine and then immediately wrap the vine around you. Or a uh, a large beast can pick you can bite you, uh, pick you up in its mouth in one action. It's kind of it's kind of for that kind of flavor to it, and I think it definitely fits um, with, the, with these kind of living branches. Um, also, note is that it. Uh, because it has grab, it's going to receive plus four on its combat maneuver checks to maintain the grapple um, after it's grabbed you, as well as starting it. Okay, uh, so we've got its main attack now. Uh, and we could also give it several slams, right? Uh, it could hit you with you know, potentially several of these branches to grab them. So let's maybe make it two slams. I don't know. Um, feel like now we should probably start looking at its core stats so we can start filling out some more information here. So let's pull up some other strong, uh, some other strong aberrations and see roughly where, where we should be looking for strength. So this one, the, the Draconid that we started with here, uh, has got 24. Let's try looking at a few other ones and see what else we can get. 
took the ever venerable Abolith. Uh, Bone Crawler ought to be good. And some of these I know, some of them I don't. The Gibbering Mouth is actually pretty close to our eyeball thing here, so I'm intentionally not reading it. Uh, well, let's see what we got here. So the Abolith. Uh, this is one of the kind of a classic aberration. Um, you see, it's got it's a magic-based aberration though. It's got these kind of abilities here, and so it goes for a higher con, I guess. Uh, the Bone Crawler. There, and this guy's a CR12, and yeah, it's got a bunch of physical attacks, and it's got a 26. So I think we're going to go to probably 24 strength here. Um, that seems more reasonable, especially because it's going to have two attacks. Uh, so 24, that's going to give us a... Uh, let's see here, uh, so let's do the math. 12, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So that's going to have a smooth plus 7 to hit. Um, so far. Uh, and then we have to add its base attack to that also. Shall I do that? Yeah. No. So it's going to be um, striking with a plus 19, which is really going to hurt. That's a very high attack bonus. Um, and again, we might want to tone it down uh, for the attack bonus if we want more of the eyes to be the focus of this rather than the uh, Whomping Willow type effect. Um, but for now, we'll say it's got 24, so it's got plus 7 strength. Uh, I feel like that slam damage is kind of laughable. It's going to need something more interesting that it can do uh, that does the actual pain. Because while this is a very high attack bonus, um, suitable for a CR10 monster, this is pitiful damage. This is absolutely pitiful for damage. So we're going to have to come up with something else like, uh, well, like probably the life leech, I'm thinking we're going to do the life leech type thing. Um, uh, so, uh, special ability, life leech. But we're going to get back to that because I want to do the rest of its stats first. So kind of the draconid we're going off of. Uh, what's this thing's armor going to look like already? We're going to give it a boatload of natural armor because it's a tree. Um, so we can get, afford to give it low dex. And I'm thinking probably about a 12 for dex. So that's going to give it a plus 1. It's still, at the, it's still negative overall for uh, armor class, but we'll fix that later. Um, it's going to have a lot of health. I've decided this. It's going to have a lot of health. Um, so I'm going to give it a really high con score. So that's a plus six. And now I need to pull out a calculator. So it's going to have plus 16 to 8 plus. That's a lot of health. That might be too much health. Am I doing this right? Yes, I am doing this right, but that's a lot of health. Um, so I might tone that down. Let's tone, let's cool this down a little bit here. I think 22 was probably overdoing it. Let's bring it down to maybe a uh, uh, eight, 19. We'll say it's a 19. Um, it's not gonna make that huge a difference. So the 19, so that's now a plus uh, four modifier, which is a bit more reasonable, which gives us, yeah, plus 64. <coughs> um, so the way HP works is you t for one is you take the max of the first level, so eight, uh, and then the rest of the level is med median value, so or middle value, so it's gonna be four. So we've got uh, 15 times 4 plus 8 plus 64 gives us 132 HP. 
Now I'm concerned that's too light. I don't know. I think, I mean, there's a huge range here, right, with 16 D8s to work from. That's, you know, anywhere from 16 to whatever 8 times 16 is. Um, but I think, let's, let's, we're trying to dial in this HP just right here. So let's give it another 16 hit points by upping its con bonus. So that makes that a smooth 80. And then that makes this a uh, 48. 148, I realize we're, we're, things are getting closer to the Draconid now. Uh, I realize that. Um, but we'll come up with some other ways to help differentiate these things. When you look at like raw stats without any of the flavor, you find that a lot of monsters of the same type quickly converge just because of well, the way the game's difficulty is structured, like there's only a few ways you can build these monsters without them being uh, a problem, so... Uh, that's not true. There's a lot of ways you can build monsters, but... Uh, since we're trying... As I'm trying to show you, this has kind of a beginner's approach to it without other than trying to stat something out and have to actually play test it before it gets used. That's the big thing is here is um, I tend to fly by the seat of my pants a lot, so we... A lot of stuff gets thrown in um, unplaytested, and then you can have problems. Um, I'm thinking not very intelligent. I'm thinking like animal level of intelligence here, so maybe uh, I'm gonna give it a two. Um, it is just a predator. Um, this fits nicely with it being uh, neutral or chaotic neutral as well. It's a predator from between the planes. Uh, it lurks. It's largely inanimate. Um, maybe it can maybe it can move. Maybe it can use those roots uh, that we were talking about to move itself. Who knows? Um, it's going to have pretty good senses, though, I feel like. Let's give it like a... Let's give it a 16 for wisdom. So it's going to have good uh, perception. Yeah, so that's going to be this. Whenever we work out what its skills are, we know that its perception is going to be at least plus three. Um, and it is, an, again, it does not communicate, so it's going to have no, uh, no charisma to speak of. Um, or at least a very low charisma score. Um, so, there we go. We have a beast, uh, our bestial creature here, um, that eats the life out of things. Uh, let's give it unusually high reach. So huge things, normally speaking, have 15 space and 15 and 15 foot reach, but let's surprise our players here by giving you a 20 foot reach. So those big overarching binds can grab way out and hit someone who's standing 20 feet back. Like, we're going to be pushing our... Uh, you're going to have to wade through a four squares, potentially, of uh, attacks of opportunity to get into melee with this thing, which is kind of nuts. Um, if we were to say give it uh, like combat reflexes or something where it has multiple attacks opportunity, this thing would be impossible to get next to. And we might <coughs> uh, if we decide that that's what we want to go with, but I'm, I'm guessing not. Um, do, 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 do. Count maneuver bonus. The strength is obviously its high stat. That's going to be 7. Defense is both of them. Um, okay. Um, uh, let's see. For now, I'm going to make it immobile. Uh, we can always come back and change it, of course. So let's talk about this much flaunted life leech ability. Um, Life Leech is generally represented by uh, constitution uh, ability damage, so actually lowering someone's con score uh, to do damage. Let me see if I can find an example of that. Oh, there's, of course, the spell called Leech Life. Actually, looking for for a uh, type of monster, but let's check this out. 
Okay, so this one's going the more extreme route. This is negative levels, which is like powerful necromancy type things. Um, so that's not quite what we're going for, because I want to do the con damage thing. Negative levels are really mean, because they lower several different stats proportional to how many negative levels you've got on you, uh, and are harder to remove. But I want to do ability drain, but I want to do ability drain maybe that's like scary fast. Uh, I'm going to pull up a monster that I know has some amount of life leeching. Uh, so this one does damage and, str and uh, point of strength damage. This is a plant. Uh, so that's the other way it can do it is it can be weakening your body. The cool thing about the strength damage is that it makes it harder to escape the grapple. So maybe we'll do it that way. Maybe we'll do it from strength damage uh, in doing it additional points of uh, physical damage. This is one of my favorite monsters. It's the, uh, the canopy creeper, which has tendrils spread over a hundred foot radius uh, that can attack you and then they grab you and they pull you in towards this um, beak that can that has a rather strong bite attack. Think uh, Jumanji. Uh, if you remember the vines in Jumanji, the, they come in and they grab at you. And this we're getting off topic here. So, um, uh, I'm going to make a note about that actually. I'm going to make a note <coughs> that it can't be tripped or pushed because it is physically attached to the floor. So life leech. Uh, it's going to deal, um, so let's see here. Um, on a grapple target, deals it's slam damage again, I guess, maybe, so a d8. Uh, and I want to make the strength drain bigger than the uh, canopy crawler because that's like a challenge rating 8 monster, this is a challenge rating 10. So I'm going to give it a d4 strength damage. Um, this is going to be scary if it actually grabs someone and starts using this ability, which it should be able to with a plus 19 and grab. Um, that's going to weaken, that's going to make it very hard very quickly to escape the damage. Um, once you have no, uh, once your strength gets reduced to zero, uh, you're paralyzed and you can no longer escape. At which point it'll sit there killing you one d8 at a time, um, or more likely it will be able to coup de gras you and just basically snap your spine. Um, isn't that fun? Uh, let's see. Uh, anyone who's joined us in the last half hour or so, this is an interactive podcast. Feel free to uh, log into chat and you can make some suggestions for me. Uh, Leonard's giving me a suggestion for a constrict attack. So let's pull up the stats for constrict uh, so I can show what that does. So constrict is commonly used for things like constricting snakes. Basically, um, when it's got you grappled, uh, what is it here? Dealing at plunging damage. Yeah, so when it's got you grappled, uh, it can give you, uh, yeah, basically it gives you, <coughs> it can keep squeezing you uh, while it's got you grappled, right? Instead of grapple check, in addition to other effects caused by such grapple check, you know, damage given by the creature's entry, completely equal to the amount of damage caused by the creature's entry. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah, so, um, <coughs> Grappling in Pathfinder, um, every round the grappler has to make a combat maneuver check to continue holding the grapple E. That's how you escape, basically, as the creature can't hold on, hold you anymore. Um, if uh, so, constrict is basically then every time you successfully keep your grip on them, uh, you deal damage. And I'm going to combine that with life leech, so I'm just going to add its strength damage to that, basically. So now this life leech is effectively a constrict attack. Um, only difference is it's a bit meaner because it doesn't have to. Um, basically, so while you've got Scott, you it's going to do this before you get your chance to escape. Um, so again, it's it, this is going to be a pretty mean monster, and that's how I like them. That's how I like them. Uh, let's see. So let's note that bit. Um, uh, let's see what other bits can we come up with. So we need to pick a few feats for this guy. 
um, as well as decide if it's gotten you. Oh yeah, three. No aberrations don't have any real immunities, do they? No. Um, it's not going to have any. Uh, oh yeah, um, it's a tree. We need to work out its armor. Uh, hold on while I pull up bark skin. This is a druid spell. Um, that basically makes your skin like a tree, and I figure that's a good place to start with. So, uh, enhance a bonus to armor class. And, uh, potentially we could also give you damage reduction, but I think just high armor class because it's a tree. So let's see, right now we're at 9 arm for total AC. I want to make it more like... Uh, I want its AC to be... So the, here, here's the reverse engineering of it. Um, at level 10, a fighter's attack bonus is going to be plus 10 plus their strength. So they're going to be able to hit... Uh, they're going to have a 50% chance at, at, at 20 AC to hit that target. Um, for a physical character. So if you want them to have less than a 50% chance, uh, you have to go over, you're going to have to go over 20. Um, for the sake of comparison, let's see what, our, what they did on our Draconid. So our Draconid, yeah, they gave, it, they gave us a 23, which is, so a 10th level warp fighter um, with good strength is still going to have a 50-50 chance of hitting this thing. Um, and uh, that was ninth in that case. So a 9th level fighter with good strength, because 9th level you should be able to get up to um, plus four modifier. Um, we'll have an excellent chance of hitting of hitting it. Um, so we want to go a bit higher than that. So we want to go probably thinking 24, 25. I think we'll go 25 for its AC. Uh, if we don't give it any damage reduction. If we give it damage reduction, then we can make it easier to hit because we'll mitigate some of that. Um, let's think. I kind of like the idea of making it... Uh, severely resistant to um, making it like easier to hit with an axe like have slashing damage deal more damage than uh, than you know like a hammer or something like that. What do people think? Do we want damage reduction instead of just high armor? Uh, what do you think chat? I'm thinking if we give it damage reduction we'll give it like an AC of 22 and damage reduction of like Eight or eight or nine, um, ex that uh, except for damage reduction of eight or nine, except for um, slashing damage. So it's broken by slashing damage. Um, that way, those uh, it'll make bow and arrows that don't do elemental damage um, wildly ineffective. Um, considering a bow hits for like usually a D8, uh, so it puts you right out on for bow and. Un, uh, basically unscratched by a, um, by a normal bow and arrow um, and uh, it likewise be pretty resistant to non to non special uh, hammers so I'm hearing that that makes sense so let's do that let's do uh, so minus two size um, we're at nine we want to be at 22 we said so that's gonna be plus 13 yes uh, Okay, so we reverse engineered that one, uh, and we're going to give it damage reduction. DR, uh, we said 8 or 9, let's give it 9 slashing. Um, so spells are still good. Magical effects don't count for damage reduction, so they're still going to have their full effect. Um, but damage reduction mitigates physical damage, so uh, it'll be able to shrug off a warhammer or a bone arrow unless you're incredibly strong. Let's be mean. Um, let's make it give it ten damage reduction. That's that's gonna be make it really. You're gonna have to use your spells. Up, basically, you're gonna have to use your spells, your special attacks, to kind of get help get through that. Uh, we've got enough stats now. We can fill out what its full armor class is. Uh, so we got yep twenty two. So ten plus dex, eleven minus two nine plus thirteen twenty two. Um, touch AC is. Nine. Um, 
War mages take note, its touch AC is laughably low because it is a big, slow tree. Uh, and its flat-footed is, uh, give me 21, because we just lost that one point from dex for flat-footed. <coughs> okay. Um, oh yeah, it's wisdom. Give it that, so. Uh, we can also resolve its fort reflex and will saves now, so that's going to be plus 10. Uh, plus 6, and plus 14, uh, which are respectable for a creature of this level, um, especially one that is slow. Um, not going to give it any immunities or energy resistance. I don't think those are really necessary. Um, so let's talk about its eyes. I feel like we're, we, we haven't done anything with these eyes yet. We just have a big aberrant, aberration treant, and the eyes are kind of its defining quality, wouldn't you say? Um, so it's got this hideous life leech thing, uh, and then it's going to have to have a gaze attack of some kind. Um, so a gaze attack is it chooses to look at someone And then bad stuff happens to them. Um, so I think uh, probably, so it's got lots of eyes, but I feel like maybe, uh, oh yeah, important actually, sorry, I just remembered. It's got lots of eyes, which means it's got all around vision. All around vision just basically means it can't be snuck up on uh, if you're visible. So it can see behind it um, and can attack in any direction. Um, that's a given, I think, for this thing. So I'm hearing a suggestion for a fear attack. I more like the idea that this thing, though, it can't move. It can't chase you, right? So I think fear, well, it could have maybe a fear aura just because it looks weird. I feel more like it's going to have a paralysis kind of gaze, like uh, like eye bite kind of thing. Right, we were talking about it looks, it, it, you know, it's got these eyes that are flitting all around, right? The eyes flit all around, and then suddenly, like, all 16 of them or whatever lock on one person. Like, just just picture it, right? Like, the, the scene in the picture here, right? You get too close enough, and suddenly all these kind of rolling random eyes suddenly fix on you. And, yeah, I think you freeze. I think... Uh, Let's let's pull up the conditions here. See uh, see if we can't find ah. Uh, conditions. There we go. Um, yeah, I think maybe paralyzing fear. Like if we want to go full the full redead um, kind of feel for it. I like that. I like that. It kind of you need to feel it and you feel just like everything just <laughs> kind of you know um, loading. Hello, Ken has web page. So PFSRD does this sometimes where it just gets slow for reasons I can't comprehend. And I work on webs, and I work in the internet. Yeah, it's doing this. I don't know what this is. Come on. Come on. Usually if I refresh enough times, it eventually works. Um... No, Shaken's the weak one. We want... Can we just have the conditions? Okay, so that's annoying. Um, excuse me for one second while I go get my hard copy of the Pathfinder book so we can continue on this bloody stream. As much as I do love using online resources, I totally did buy a hard copy of this book because, um, well, sometimes I don't have the internet and sometimes the website's broken and I need to go continue doing a web stream. So, uh, let's see here. So, cowering 
is, I believe, the, stat the, spe the specific status effect we are looking for. Cowering says, this creature is frozen in fear and can take no actions. A cowering character takes a minus two penalty to armor class and loses his dex bonus, if any. Uh, that sounds roughly like what we're doing, what we're going for. Let's see if we can, uh, yeah, frightened makes you want to run. Um, shaken is just, you're, un you're, you're unsettled by this. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do um, cowering. Uh, normally, as I understand it, uh, So I'm just going through the various states of here. Here we also have frightened and panicked. That's the other one. Staggering, paralyzed, pinned, panicked. Uh, drop anything and flee. Yeah. Uh, but um, if cornered, yeah. Normally, so normally cowering happens if you're panicked and you get cornered. Hello there, Lucid Awakening. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we're discussing uh, what the effect of this thing looking at you is going to be. Um, and uh, so far the suggestion we've got is that it freezes you in place with sheer terror. Uh, and I like that. I think... Uh, so I think it's going to do that. I think it's going to make you cower uh, when it looks at you. Um, Um, so it's going to look at you, and, and then you get frozen in place. Um, let's do... So it's a mind, that's a mind-affecting ability, so that's going to be a will save. Um, I think it's also a visual thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, so it's going to be mind-affecting, and it's going to be a, a visual thing, so uh, if it can... Uh, <coughs> <coughs> so the idea is it's just so unsettling when all those eyes focus on you, um, when you see all those eyes looking at you, that you just freeze uh, out of sheer cosmic terror. Uh, as a result, a blind character might would actually not be affected by this. And I think that's fine. It's I think it's kind of cool. There aren't that many blind adventurers, so uh, let's let that let's let those oracles that chose blindness as their weakness um, take advantage of it. They're the only ones who could, uh, I think. Um, or you cast dark, or you cast deeper darkness. It's got dark vision, so if you were to like cast darkness, so uh, you can't see it, it could still be able to see you and attack you and stuff like that. Um, um, so it's got will save um, to, uh, we're going to say will save to reduce to frightened. It's uh, a great thing about these kind of, the kind of fear effects. Um, oh wow, Lucid. Okay, I'm going to just, uh, so Lucid, who's just joined us in chat here, says he's been DMing for a uh, very long time, uh, actually long before I was DMing. Uh, so Lucid, we're playing. We're, I'm making a stat block here for this creature for a uh, variant of D&D called Pathfinder, um, which you can find uh, resources for online at uh, d20pfsrd.com. Um, uh, technically speaking, it's not mainline D&D, &D, um, but uh, it, it is a derived from it, and it's got some quite a few similarities. If you've been playing older editions, it's probably gonna be more familiar to you um, than uh, Fourth Ed, or probably more familiar than Fifth Ed. Um, so I encourage you to uh, check it out. Also, be sure to check out um, past episodes of this stream where I've been doing a lot of the behind-the-screen stuff for building a new campaign setting. Um, they're all on the YouTube channel linked below the video. Uh, I encourage you to watch. Uh, and if you're curious about my other other setting, uh, that's in the blog. That's also linked below the video if you're watching on Twitch um, or in my, linked in my channel if you're watching this on YouTube later. So, um, will save to reduce frighten to frightened, uh, and the DC for that. So I should explain that fear uh, exists on a continuity, and frightened is kind of one of the medium steps in 
uh, Um, let's make the save DC be uh, making it charisma based doesn't make any sense. So let's make um, making the save DC tied to a stat is useful if you want to make this creature bigger. So uh, we'll probably make it based on its con because if it becomes bigger, like physically larger, then it's going to have a higher con score. Uh, the DC is going to be uh, there's a specific spell I think I can find. I bite is one spell I'm thinking of. Does that yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is kind of what we're looking for here, kind of freezing you in place. Uh, they actually made that be a fortitude save. Interesting. In this case, it's a mind affecting visual one, though, so I'm kind of fine with that. But uh, it does mean actually. Hmm. So this is a good point here. Um, fighters have bad will saves. So making this a will-based thing uh, means making this a will-based thing uh, on top of already making it have damage reduction in high armor class means that we are seriously screwing uh, melee classes. So I think I'm going to uh, make this a... Uh, Make this a fort save, um, just because we don't want to be screwing uh, the uh, screwing one group of players specifically. And so far, all of this is basically a big screw you to uh, fighters. So let's let's make it a fort save so that they get some reprieve from this. Um, and then I close that tab. Why'd I do that? Yeah, lucid having. I mean, I don't. Yeah, if you need, especially if you like have a hard time uh, reading the books now. Uh, the online resources are, are just a godsend. Like, I, I, part of the reason I picked up Pathfinder was because it was so easy to find information because of this wonderful uh, website and the fact that it's all indexed on Google so I can search it quickly. Uh, it's, it's a huge game changer for DMing. Um, so this is a six level spell, which means a full caster is going to be, what, level 12 to get it? Level 11. Uh, we're, we're just reverse engineering save DC here again. So 11. Uh, 10 plus the stability score plus the spells level. Spells level 6. That's going to be 10. 16. Yeah, I guess 16. And then it's spell casting stat, which is uh, 16. That's plus 3. So that's. That's a DC 19 fortitude save right now. I'm not sure if we want to lower that, or no. No, let's let them have it. So, um, at 10th level, right, at 10th level, even a full caster is going to have a plus three for their fort save, um, plus whatever their stats give them. Um, uh, so, the, yeah, the, so I think we'll give the gaze DC 19. Uh, I'm just randomly saying that this creature's spellcasting side's wisdom, so that's why we give it this thing. <coughs> so that's and so that's a huge um, so fort save. A fighter can make this, right? A fighter can make that fort save. Um, perhaps not well, but they definitely can. This is going to freeze your puny wizard into place, though, um, which is good because wizards. Um, would otherwise have the advantage. So now we're kind of saying screw you um, to classes equally when they try and fight this thing, uh, which I think is nice. So, ooh. Um, we could pick a few feats to help cover any gaps we've got here. Um, uh, I'm not really seeing any particular things that need feats covered. One thing I tend to like to do. Uh, Actually, so let's talk about, so we know it's going to have bad, uh, if we put all skills into perception, it's still not going to, hmm. uh, remind me, what are the class skills for an aberration? 
Yeah. <coughs> right. Aberrations have lots of skills. So, um, so feet skills and modifiers. These are parts I tend to leave neglected when I'm building my own stat when I'm building my own creature stats, just because they tend to not be game changers so much as the creature's actual abilities are. Um, so let's see, what can we give it? Um, we can cover up its will, its low reflex. Oh, oh, I know actually. Stex is no, it doesn't have doesn't have enough uh, dexterity for to make combat reflexes worthwhile. So we're not going to be getting that multiple attack of opportunity um, fun. Uh, let's do. Um, Initi uh, let's give it improved initiative. That's one of my favorite feats for enemies. That's going to give it an, a respectable five <coughs> for its initiative. Um, uh, let's talk about its skills. So, four plus int. Its int modifier is, of course, punishingly low. Um, so it's really not going to have much skills to speak of. Uh, but it's going to have one, minimum one per hit die, and I think we're going to throw that all into perception um, so that it can notice things trying to sneak up on it. It's already got all-around visions, which is a huge perception perceptual bonus. But honestly, since it's a tree, um, I think noticing stuff is going to be the way to go here. So let's give it... Um, uh, so yeah, let's dump all 16 of its skill points into that. So it's going to be... Perception, it's going to be 16 plus wisdom, which is 3, so that's plus 19. And now we can fill this part out. Perception's always listed at the top just for uh, convenience sake, really, for de dealing with these stat blocks. Um, okay, I think we can kind of finalize a lot of these stats now. Go through here. Peel off the temporary stickers. Uh, we've spent all its skill points. We still have quite a few feats to pick. Um, I might just leave those as an exercise for the reader, seeing as I'm nearing the end of my stream now. <coughs> uh, oh yes, a description. We have to come up with a nice classy description for people who uh, aren't looking at line arts art here. Um, um, let's see here. Before you stands a large willowy, uh, tr it's a large gnarly tree, knobbly tree, a large knobbly tree, a knobbly old tree, um, adorned with numerous eye, with numerous eyeballs, uh, growing within it, growing from its branches. Uh, as you approach, they focus their gaze on you and you feel unsettled as piss runs down your leg. No. Um, Yeah, Lucid, let's say they sprout from knots in its limbs. I like that. I think that's what C. Hillier was going for here. <coughs> so there we go. So the, 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 ta the table description is now. So, before you stands a large, gnarly tree. 
It has no leaves. Its branches end in rough claws. Numerous eyeballs sprout from knots in its limbs. As you approach, the eyes focus on you, filling you with supernatural dread. It's a bit long for a block text description, but I think I like it. I think I do. Um, so let's see. What am I missing? Oh, yeah, some more feats. More feats. Any good suggestions here? Yeah, power attack's not a bad choice. Attach. <coughs> um, let's see, do we want to... We can give it even more HP with toughness. 16 more HP? Let's do it. Uh, da, 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 da. I like to do... When I have toughness, it does this. So I know why the hell it has that those 16 extra HP later on. Uh, that's going to bring us up to 164, which is uh, still a perfectly safe, respectable total for a CR10 monster. Uh, treasure will be standard. This thing's eaten people. Presumably, it's got some treasure lying around somewhere. Um, Solitary. Uh, couldn't come up with. A, couldn't. Don't really have time to come up with a good environment block description. Those tend to be a bit longer. But I think we're done here. Um, just make a note about the feats. Cool. So I am going to post this stat block on the Stone Dice blog, which is linked. Um, it'll be linked in the video description if you're watching this on YouTube later, or in Twitch. It'll be on my blog uh, in sometime within the next hour. Um, along with a link to see Hillier 17's wonderful piece of art. Um, again, I again, the text, the stat block is Creative Commons. You can use it wherever you want as long as you give me credit. Um, but the artwork uh, all belongs to see Hillier 17. Um, and please don't rip him off without permission. Uh, so that's it for tonight's stream. Um, you can watch uh, my other videos on the YouTube channel, which is linked on Twitch below me or uh, in my YouTube channel if you're watching on YouTube. Um, all of the stuff I've produced, all of my original content is Creative Commons attribution, so you can borrow it uh, and use it however you like, even republish it in your own settings if you want. All I ask is that you give me credit, and if you give me a tweet, I will give you a shout out in return on the stream here. That's everything for tonight, so have a good night, and I'll see you next week, probably. It is US Thanksgiving, I live in the US, um, so if I'm not on Twitch uh, next Wednesday, uh, it's because I've got Thanksgiving plans that evening. Uh, not sure what they are yet, though. So, good night, Twitch, and I'll see you in one or two weeks. Bye now.